Now, when a, when a Jewish kid decides to believe in the Messiah, in Yeshua, it, uh, it's not easy for the family. And I remember my mom's reaction. She came out to see me. I was in school in Tucson at the time, and she found the best psychologist in town to send me to. And I was willing. I was. I didn't feel like I had anything to hide. And I, I went to see him several times a week for several weeks until I was headed off to college uh, in another city. And at the end of our discussions and meeting with him, my, my mom had a long conversation with him, at the end of which he was so complimentary about how I had my head screwed on straight that she said to him, Gary, if, uh, if you become a believer, I'm going to charge you for Alan's time. Uh, so after that, uh, my mom scrambled around and found uh, a rabbi that she wanted me to meet with. And this was a rabbi that uh, was a specialist in dealing with Jewish kids who had come to believe in, in the Messiah. Um, and he had answers for you know, Jewish interpretations of, of many of the Bible prophecies of the Messiah, but there was one key prophecy in Daniel 9 that I had been taught and well grounded in the history, and I was a history major, um, that he could not shake me. In fact, if anything, I probably shook him. Uh, it was a prophecy found in chapter 9 of Daniel where there's a time prophecy of 490 years, 77, 70 weeks of, of years. And he agreed that the 77s were weeks of years, uh, but his math was off. And I knew my history, I knew my dates. And, and uh, you know, he wanted to say, well, it extends from the first dest destruction of the first temple to the destruction of the second temple, which clearly was over 600 years, not less than 500. So that, that wasn't gonna work. He also wanted to say that the Messiah, the Prince, in that prophecy was not the Messiah, it was just a Messiah. But when I pointed out that it wasn't just a Messiah, it was Messiah the Prince, uh, he had to concede that yes, after all, it was the Messiah, not just any Messiah. Uh, so we kind of left in a draw, which uh, was frustrating for him. Um, I left holding on to my faith, which uh, I think was not his usual experience. Um, this prophecy was very important to my spiritual growth because what I saw was, um, what I was taught was that when you put this time prophecy of, of the number of years uh, together with the Passover as a prophecy of a substitutionary atonement, a, a suffering servant Messiah who would give his life for uh, the sins of the world, you have in the Hebrew Scriptures Combining the Passover with Daniel 9, you have the year, the month, the day, and even the time of day that the Messiah would become an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. That blew my mind. And that has been a foundation for my faith ever since.